Hello, love. How are Hello. you? Hello, my dear. I'm doing great. I would say that there's so many, um, kind of as if you know, the, there's a lot of this excitement and a little bit of fear when it comes to what is supposed to happen, let's say, next Monday. So I think it's something interesting to speak about, right? How are yeah. you? I'm really good. I'm really good, thank you. Yeah, um, it, it's, it's the same. <laughs> the same feeling of excitement and, you know, uh, what are they trying to implement now? <laughs> right? But, you know, as we were speaking in the past, it's kind of like there's this thrill, literally, like there's an aspect of the collective consciousness that is kind of waiting for certain things to happen and we feel that in the air and that's kind of always bringing us to those past timelines where we had all of those disasters and as if there's like an aspect of ourselves that is literally awaiting for the same pattern to repeat yeah <clears throat> yeah i would agree with that that, but that's the expectation, isn't it? Especially with um, the pushing of what's about to happen. You know, exactly. this whole push of everyone's holding their breath, you know? That's kind of what it feels right now, as if, like, you cannot take a full breath because there's this tension hanging in the air and, you know, all sorts of conspiracy theories about, like... You know, what's going to happen, the fact that in the past we had all sorts of things taking place during all of those different eclipses. So, yeah, it's very interesting to actually look into that and realize that you might be even holding some kind of past life connection to an eclipse. I don't know if you have one like this. I do. Uh, yes, I think we were kind of around the same era <laughs> of, of the, the eclipses. Yeah, I get um, UK for me, around the, the 1700 eclipses. For me, it was actually also in the 17th century, but that was in France, interestingly. And yeah. like, that's something that I told you, I was clearing that where I remember standing in the group and there was this king and later on, he was actually called the um, the king of the sun. But that's actually dating back to the story where they knew that the sun would be covered by the moon. And so he was actually presented later as the savior who brought back the sun to the people. While in the meantime, everybody was getting infiltrated. So that's what I've been um, clearing lightly, just bringing the nomicid energies on that timeline and just releasing all those weird possessions that were taking place. Is your dog making a noise again? <laughs> yeah. Then it can be really funny with that. So um is it gone? <laughs> yeah she'll calm down in a minute it's like when we when um you know we're hitting a particular topic she'll suddenly you know pre yeah yeah maybe i kind of i don't know brought that frequency up a little bit <laughs> i just yeah. thought it would be interesting to share but you know as i was saying that it was actually showing that your connection is getting very weak so it's like we do get a lot of interference during this one again i feel yeah yeah i mean yesterday was it yesterday i think it was yesterday i couldn't message you i was sending you messages and they weren't they weren't going through i couldn't be sent couldn't be sent i was like what is going on they obviously don't want us to talk to each other <laughs> but you know, I think I was receiving some interference like um, in general because my friend had the same and she was trying to message me on WhatsApp and it just couldn't right. come through. It came through only when she messaged me on Skype and then the messages kind of like got sent. So I do believe it's just like there's there's some interference on so that I don't have an access <laughs> <laughs> to, um, to information, I guess. 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. So the let's go back then into um the what do you feel is actually happening? What is the what do you feel the agenda is now? So perhaps we'll kind of go back to the fact that um I was even reading today just kind of facts about the eclipse and that actually planet Earth is the only one which is having that eclipse event is just normally like the size of the moon and the sun is not matching so how come they are in such perfect proportions with each other right they've been measuring that and actually showing that like how come is it so perfect like you know it it, it couldn't have been just created by um by the forces of nature and by the way like i remember the times when we actually didn't really have a moon and the sun was the size of the half of the sky, you know? Yeah. So right now, even the sun that we are seeing, like it's way too small. If the sun is 99% of the entire capacity of the solar system, we cannot even imagine how big it is. There aren't even properly, you know, designed models to show yeah. that. Um, so first thing, the sun is much smaller and we see like a lens. And somehow this lens is perfectly aligned with an artificially inserted moon, which is a part of Maldek, is it, isn't it? This planet yeah. that is right now the asteroid belt. So I even had that insight today and it kind of got scary for me as I was just like, I told you there's, there's basically this observatory in the Vatican City. And luckily they couldn't see me because I just instantly went there with my urea body. But there's me like, oh gosh, I hope, I'm I'm just gonna say like now I'm making yeah. up a story. Yeah, we're just telling stories here, guys. <laughs> yes. This is purely a fiction, but I was seeing like the Pope and the and four other um let's say people, but obviously they were shape shifting. They were like behind him and they were well wearing those cloaks. And so like when he starts to get like excited with that energy. He started to shape shift into a, like I could see his tail and his the shapes kind of got more demonic, and that's when the others started doing the same thing. And I kind of got scared and I got out of that vision. But basically, they were like looking at the stellar alignments because basically the shield of the moon can be easily moved. Like I don't know if you've been seeing that, Caroline, but for the past two years, one day the moon is like more on the west. On the other day, it's suddenly completely in a, in a different place. They are just moving it. It's not like it's progressively kind of like going around the sky. So, yeah, I mean, I, I was saying to you the other day, actually, about the artificial, like the, the, <clears throat> the eclipses are artificially placed yeah. to create particular energy. Um, how can I put it? energetic impacts through that interaction um so we're not getting the the full sun codes coming through because they're being blocked by the moon um but it's been uh, harnessed into that position so there's a particular yes. yeah so they, they they will just move it Yes, and that's actually very carefully planned and calculated because like coming back to this observatory in the Vatican City, they are actually tracing that with other moments when the timelines are kind of coming together and we have like this timeline shift on the 8th of April. So like they are trying to bring the frequencies from other timelines and like for those who are wondering what's on the other side of the moon, well, I've been seeing the Metatron's cube in the violet color. So like with this pale violet frequency that is, as you said, reversing the solar frequencies. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Because that, that's the way that they get in. Right, so in order for possession to happen, there has to be a reversal on the inner plasma bodies. Right, for that to actually take effect. So if uh, we're having the plasma bodies running on reverse, current there's more um opportunity is the way I would put it. <laughs> more opportunity for infiltration to come into um 
a physical manifestation. And I don't know about you, but I also had the vision of um, like this kind of moment of chaos. There's a, like this whole um, scenario of complete chaos with people watching others behavior suddenly becoming really erratic. And they don't really know, like, who, who are you <laughs> kind of questioning thing. I had it this morning. Um, and actually, I realized I had that vision a couple of years ago where um, I was kind of being shown that day, whenever it was, that moon was artificially inserted. And, like, I had this flashback of, like, you know, all of us just being really happy, you know, like, I think we were in some kind of a forest, this group of people. And they inserted that moon and like the sky became in this toxic orange color and the birds started freaking out. Suddenly we would be like, you know, co-creating with the animals. Suddenly they would start to attack us, you know, and basically all of those behaviors. Um, I would say that there could be a lot of crimes around the time of the eclipse, just like there were during the equinox. Um... So I absolutely feel what you're saying. And there's been like also like one location coming up. I don't know if there's a connection to it, but I was sensing something about the Yellowstone. And since you were talking about the chaos, I just kept hearing like the Yellowstone. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's um like what I've also seen is that they're using particular ley lines in the state to set a template that's going to kind of ripple through um, the rest of the West, just what I would say. Um, and it, it also felt like there was old tech being sparked up with the pulling of the, that um, darker kind of frequencies through the grids, um, up through Serpent Mount in Ohio. So where you've got like the, the serpent mound, it's got its mouth open, holding the egg shape, right? So they're birthing something along serpent mound through the, through into the the um egg yes. holding. That's my feeling. I would only um, add to that that it's not just the grids, but also this. It's like there's there is this alignment with the underground tunnels where I was seeing that darkness you saw it through the grids I saw it through those underground tunnels like this shadow black goo twisted consciousness twisted elemental consciousness just traveling like crazy through those tunnels I was thinking to myself why are you in such a hurry <laughs> guys slow down guys you know right? yeah absolutely <clears throat> But it, feel, it feels like it's kind of been picking up this week. Like you can feel that rush underneath where it's coming. It's going to come kind of to the surface, I feel, with the pull of the moon across the um, that zone. Yes. The, the ecliptic zone. Absolutely. Um, and later on, those solar frequencies will be running as the reverse plasma currents in you unless you actually protect yourself from that. And that's where the Nomi seed kind of comes into the game and it's really, really help helpful when it comes to that. Yeah, definitely. definitely. I mean, that's the other thing I've been seeing is like wherever, wherever you are, if you're carrying that encryption or you've picked it up, then holding your ground you know, it's it's like protection for you, but it's yeah. also being able to bring those frequencies to the surface, you know, and spreading them for those who are choosing a different way. You know, it's, again, it's that opportunity, you know? Yes. Because you can't force anyone else. It, it, it is literally just, you know, being able to have that opportunity to, to um, pick the host up if, Absolutely, <laughs> because after all, you don't have to. <laughs> yeah. 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 So what else? Is there anything else that we've been... So what I've been seeing, like when it comes to the uh, how to protect the planet from it, is actually kind of creating like this huge rainbow bubble around the entire planet. And then those who want to pick it up, 
they can kind of like downstep this bubble into their fields. Um, because otherwise without this planetary protection, the planet will suffer by itself. So like this is something that if someone is like, well, I kind of feel like I'm a grid worker, how can I help? You can actually put kind of like send yourself to the Nomi seed as a plasma body consciousness or the urea body consciousness and from there just lovingly surround the entire planet with those rainbow frequencies so i've been seeing it i've kind of been seeing it a different way but it's actually the same thing but a different right. way so i've been seeing us on the surface and pulling like through through our physical body pulling the frequencies up and spreading them so that they're interlocking with each other so we're all holding those frequencies between us and creating a shield for her because she's already made her choice right absolutely so the planet is like yes please help us <laughs> please help me however i can um and actually there's I've been kind of seeing that tendency that there's going to be quite a, lo a lot of spiritual people taking a day off <laughs> on Monday to integrate those eclipse energies. I'm kind of doing the same thing. So <laughs> it's it's interesting what kind of um, what kind of energies different people will actually spread to the grids on that day. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that there was the feeling of that as well. And like get the work kind of done beforehand and then you know just allow <laughs> don't don't interact that day you know? right <laughs> so there's been a lot i'm sure as there are with a lot of um like celestial events and stuff like that that you know i know that there's going to be group meditations and you know that kind of let's all get together and um do some nefarious thing that we think is the right thing to do sorry um so i would yeah for the actual eclipse i would keep yourself to yourself personally you know it's like you don't need to get involved on the day or post after the day yeah you know? i mean you can gather with your family and just enjoy some rainbow frequencies but mm you don't have to join all of those huge group meetings because you might it not might necessarily come directly into you but it might be projected by somebody who might have certain tendencies in their plasma templates to pick up on these distortions and like as you basically as you're in the group the energies are blending and you might just catch something into your field that you wouldn't like. Yeah, I think it's also, you know, if you know what your core encryption is to hold that, you know, with your own intention, it, and it's um, it's not we're not in a fighting thing. From from my perspective, we're not in a it's not a fighting thing. We're not against anyone. Yeah. It's just holding, you know, holding our frequencies and the um, rainbow plasmas. To a, a higher extent. That's all. Yes, yes, absolutely. Um, these frequencies, it's not about who's having more of the rainbow plasmas or anything like that. Each one of us is activating it in their own divine right timing. So during the eclipse, especially if there are still certain people thinking that this is a good event and you can use these energies for your own manifestation. Well, I'm not going to mention the names of the beings that would kind of, that you would attach to, but... Where should um, I do that then? <laughs> go ahead. You did that too. So there's definitely um, Draco, Anunnaki, and the um, Black Dragon Legion that are also in play. Well, I actually was... Um, I wanted to say a name of a specific demonic entity that has always been responsible for the eclipses and their energies. 
but the, the first letter starts with B, right? Okay. And it has only like four letters. There's only four letters in his name. I guess uh -huh. everybody can guess that. <laughs> it, <laughs> coded. It, it's a coded thing. Um, I know that the um the the eclipse energy is often used by um the hidden societies, isn't it? You know, for like sexual magic and blood magic as well. Yeah, yeah. And it feels like that's another group that is kind of like very much planning different things, especially like in bigger cities, I would say. Mostly in the bigger cities. But at the same time, it's getting much more challenging for them with the Nomi, <clears throat> with the Nomi energy. So suddenly the, at some point, this bright light will become too bright for them. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a... Um... I don't know, last ditch attempt, you know, at, at trying to keep us kind of suppressed and not enable our freedom, you know, and, it, and the only way we're really going to get that is when everyone kind of realizes we're all stuck together, you know, <laughs> we're all stuck in here. How are we going to assist each other to get out, you know? Yes, and that doesn't work like that, that suddenly some spaceships are going to come for certain groups and the rest will be left alone. I don't believe it's going to happen like this. And um, I guess one more thing that um, I saw that from the post from Ian Parks, where we had that, I sent you that excerpt from the newspaper from 1970, where they actually said that the next full eclipse would be in 2024. So um, so again, it's kind of like connecting to those certain dates and certain events and like projecting out these future timelines. Yeah, because they're harnessing them together. So it's like latching on to a future future timeline to pull pull it back. Absolutely. But as long as you're not so much connected, to all of those um, events. If if some of you are feeling like huge fear or like way too big excitement before it, kind of try to go back and see if that's related in any kind of way. Because if so, that could be like another opening through which those energies could come into you. Right? So that's just like a small advice to kind of look into it if you particularly feel any kind of fear um that is out there and that could be also related to all sorts of solar and moon magic that kind of had its beginning in the babylon and the sumerian times as well that's when they were especially using that that cult of the sun and the moon kind of yeah. dancing in the sky or kind of what, like they were more like treated like puppets in that case yeah yeah definitely yeah that, that whole um you know using the energies of you know the sun and moon to embody particular um energetic deities onto the planet as well you know harnessing the harnessing the energies for um, incarnating particular beings onto the planet at those times. Right. Mm -hmm. And it can be quite wild when it comes to that. But I think that when it comes to whether something will happen, how do you feel about it? Um, well, I always say that the future's never set. <laughs> it's not, right? No, it's just a probability. And they're trying to kind of push the narrative in one way. Like this is going, this is going to happen, this is going to happen, you know, and, and the more people that go down that this is going to happen route, 
the more yeah. likely your energy is going to be harvested in order to push it that way. Um, so yeah, just try and stay neutral, I guess. We don't know. We don't exactly, know. Just... exactly. I mean, I personally don't feel like there would be something, but um, as you state, staying neutral and kind of staying on your own harmonic that day because you have the free will choice, you can take these energies into you or not once you start to interact with them, kind of be aware that you might feel like something is kind of coming into your field. But in general, the more relaxed and calm you stay with yourself on that day and any kind of other days, it's going to be better, especially that actually the 8th of April is also like the beginning of this Nomia wave cycle. So at the same time, I think this is great news for um for the fact that there's gonna be a lot of beautiful energies coming coming through. Yeah, uh, that's my feeling as well. It's like just keep the the positive flow of like it's it's all gonna pan out absolutely beautifully. That that's my feeling is just keep on that trajectory rather than I know we're talking about stuff which is which potentially has you know some nefarious things behind it but it doesn't mean that we have to go down that or be pulled towards that way of believing the future into manifestation exactly exactly so even though in the beginning we kind of started i guess <laughs> a little bit you know like down the road with all of those things um it may it may feel scary but actually when you get to that certain stage where you realize like I'm eternal, I'm an eternal being. So like I'm actually immaculate. There's an aspect of me that is already ascended and I'm bringing that frequency into my body. Um, nothing really can happen to you, can it? No. No. No, because you've always got that. You've always got that connection to your eternal self. Whether we um, realize that or believe it or understand it is another thing. But it we we've never lost that. We've never lost that eternal self. So absolutely, yeah. like having that reminder, you know, of like you are eternal and you are your own perfect encryption of yourself. <laughs> and as we started talking about the eternal it actually got beautifully sung in here so I guess it's some kind of a sign yeah so is there anything else you want to talk about so I guess since we had also certain similar experiences lately with the interesting I would say plasma body clearing sessions. Yes. I guess that would be <laughs> something to kind of touch base on as well. So do you want to yeah. start? Yeah, I mean, I've, um, with the plasma body clearings, I've come across quite a lot of distortions in the plasma bodies. Um, the water elemental bodies are, are like people are running black goo through their body um and with the air elemental body it's it's like um nanoparticles you know there's tiny specks of dust mm. like clouds of dust um <clears throat> so that's what i've been kind of experiencing and helping people to deal with trying to just get their plasma bodies working again you know, if, if, um, one of um, my clients came to me with a shredded plasma body, like it was completely uh, kind of torn is the only way I can wow. describe it. It's, it feels like to me, I mean, it's very important to heal those like the water, the air body, because actually without healing those plasma elemental templates, you're not going to have a good connection with the elementals in your body and around you so the reason why they block the air body so much is because it's actually also related to the sense of freedom 
but I was seeing kind of like the chains, like the handcuffs on somebody's um, air body because that was supposed to block their freedom. Yeah. No, right. Actually, I've had that as well. Yeah, I've, I've seen that too. And um, those distortions in the water body, it was like in one body, uh, I think I saw that yesterday, it's like it looked like as if this plasma layer of the water was actually boiling. Like the water molecules were just being burned out. I guess that's the best way to, to explain it. And later on, if you realize that your body is made of water, it's like your entire body from the inside is boiling and then you kind of feel like there's definitely something that you um that you need to do in order to fix it because you feel like there are like this auto destruction programs running in your body and it's having its core in the plasma templates yeah yeah so how how do we how do we, how have you been working with that then how have you been Kind of helping people to clear with that so i've been applying the rule clearing from the inside out so this means that you connect with your core which is the urea body and the and this core let's say it's like between chakra three and four it's called the ura point and that's basically like you might not even see this point but you just feel like if you were supposed to kind of like say that there's like this point in my body which is the core of me and it cannot be reversed and I can always refer back to this point in order to get an unlimited access of frequencies. That's this point. And you start with basically connecting with your ether body, which is the most inner layer. You spread those, let's say, eternal frequency and you connect them with the ether so that you get those amplified vapors that could later on go to the air body, start fixing the air body, then you can go to the waters, so the more outer layer. And then you you blend the quantum of the ether and the air and the core to vaporize the waters. And then you just keep going like this with the earth body and the fire body. Yeah. Yeah, I've been doing the same thing. But I've, I've also found that um, when people don't have enough energy, I'm kind of having to help them to get going again. You know, it's like it's such um <clears throat> how can I put it? Such a harsh kind of infiltration. Yeah. That people just don't have the energy in order to maintain any of the plasma bodies. So I'm having to kind of come in to to assist with getting um it mainly the I would say the ether, so the the core self and the ether body going so that they then have enough energy from that to be able to move outside yes, yes so that's actually what i've been advising to some people i've been seeing on a regular basis like we're gonna do it like let's say next week but over the next few days just build up this immunity and keep connecting and blending your eternal body with your eaters otherwise we might not have enough quantum um, there's been a couple of times where it actually happened like just automatically where like a part of my urea body just went I've, through, right? I had the same thing. I've had the same thing as suddenly like inside someone else to try and boost yes. their yes. frequency. Yeah. So, so that happened a couple of times, but usually um if somebody is actually building up that quantum but again like you have to um in order to make the eternal body effective you have to keep bringing these frequencies uh, frequencies and spreading them to your plasma and light body templates yeah yeah because this is the this is the core expression of who you actually are right as a being so all of the um distortions kind of get in the way of your own creation yeah, so you don't have a full expression because of the distortions in the way so we have to kind of come from like you say the inside out from the core of us and then enable the other bodies to come back into alignment with our core encryption who are you inside you know at the core of your being totally totally so 
it's been very interesting actually discovering these things and I was like oh my gosh like is it really is it even real <laughs> right <laughs> um and like just kind of realizing that when you're having like an attachment on the light body level all you have to do is like dissolve the cord kind of like remove the connection or like just push out the being out of your body that's so simple but like when you get to the plasma body this black goo which is literally sticking to everything you know and then you don't just push it out like you have to literally remove progressively all of those different attachments and like that glue and then you can kind of send that being away yeah yeah it's it's a lot harder to work from the internal than it is the light body is kind of um easy you know to just detach from from stuff but when it's coming from the inside of you you know that's when it um <clears throat> gets far more difficult to you know you do have to go into layers have you also seen like um the sheath around the bodies as well like there's different densities of like a shell like yes yes I'm over so that the bodies aren't actually communicating with each other that's what i found as well yes 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 those different blockages between the elemental layers very commonly it's like between the air and the water body so that like the air cannot communicate with the water so like two processes two processes in your body get just completely distorted right so it's very strongly affecting the fact that like the cells don't get enough oxygen, then they struggle to like properly collect the water element. So it's becoming pretty much of a chaos, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. And I found that it's a really slow process. Like it's like if you if you've got to that point where it's in you know that um level of infiltration into the um air body. <clears throat> I'm finding it, it's a slow process it's not something that you can just wipe right the way through it's like this progression of having to um build enough energy from the inside in order to clear the next level up yes know? yes so it's basically taking time but I think it's um it's a process worth just taking enough time on because you can it can really heal you and it can give you like the beautiful experience because if you have your core which each one of us has it but you actually experience um the infiltration in the plasma body you might struggle with the light body as well and kind of like feeling extremely disconnected because there isn't that circuit like the plasma body kind of circulating the eternal between the eternal body and the light body yeah i mean i think that the the plasma body for me is like the sandwich you know <laughs> it's like you've got your core and creation and you've got all the filling and then you've got the layer of you know bread on the outside so it's like being able to um move through all of those layers in order to come out into the light body with your your original encryption absolutely yeah. so is there anything else do you feel like sharing i was having a quick scan is there anything else i need to share i don't think so i think that we've kind of covered everything yeah i think exactly in the same way so i hope that everybody kind of found it helpful and that there isn't so much <laughs> fear after listening to that right yeah um, yeah that's where we're about really is going well this is the kind of thing that might happen but you just have to stay in your you know in your positive frequency so who you are as a being and what you also want to see mm -hmm. absolutely and besides it's only one day <laughs> and then it's over <laughs> So, so I take it this way though, like I'm just all focused until the eclipse and then I'm just gonna enjoy the beautiful Nomiya wave energies. Um, for those that not, don't know, basically the Nomiya wave cycles are this, these times when that 
Nomi Wave is coming in and is basically downloading the Christic Nomi rainbow energies into our plasma templates and then they are going into our physical and light body templates. So it's like a beautiful time when you can actually catch really, really amazing energies. I look forward to that. Yeah, I look forward to that. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, thanks for the catch up, love. Good to see you. Thank you as well. It's always beautiful to connect with you and exchange our um, parallel insights. Yeah. So, um, I guess until the next time, whenever it is. Yeah. Okay. You take care. To, take uh, care. Loads of love Bye. There. You lot out there. Hope you have a fantastic eclipse. Um, of and course. after. <laughs> and after. <laughs> yeah.